Hey everybody, how's it going? Hopefully you guys can see me. Perfect. So welcome to episode six of Corn Train. Today we're gonna to be doing some really cool stuff with a bison here. So uh, this is actually the finished picture that you guys are going to be making. Uh, and I was thinking about it last night. I probably done this with about 500 kids and adults in Kinton and area. So I'm really excited to teach you guys how to do this too. It's really easy and it turns out really pretty too. And uh, you can do the option of not putting the bison on for your frame, but I think it just adds a really cool finish to it. So if you are an adult and you are watching this, you can join in too. All you'll need is some pieces of paper or you can print off our printables on our website, um, preferably on cardstock. And before I get started, I need to introduce myself again. My name is Maddie and I'm the manager at the Northern Rockies Museum. And you guys have been learning all about space this week with the fabulous Tara. And uh, now we're just going to do a fun class on painting some stars, a night scene in the Rocky Mountains, uh, kind of as a wrap up for this week. Uh, and I know that I am going to be adding um, into my happy thoughts jar, the stars, because I love the stars and the constellations that we learned about this week are so interesting and the stories are so interesting. The Greek mythology and the indigenous traditional oral stories are crazy and some of them are kind of funny too. So that's what I put in my happy thought jar this week. So to get started, you are going to need the printables from uh, our website. So there's a couple of pages and if you got our uh, packages, you should have them all in there. Next, you are going to need some paint. So you're going to need uh, white paint, black paint and blue paint. You're also gonna need a palette of some kind. So, um, or you can use a, a plate, really it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And you're going to need some glue or some double-sided tape, which is what I'm using today. Uh, of course, a paintbrush so you can paint and a pair of scissors. And you don't actually need this. I'm just adding it. Uh, a cup of water. Um, we actually don't need to wash our brushes in between colors during this painting, which is what makes it, again, really easy and less messy. Um, I'm just adding it here if you so choose to have that. So that's there. And uh, I think we're all ready to get started here. So the first page that you guys are going to need should have, I think, five in here. But we're going to start with the sky. So let's get the sky out here. So this is the sky sheet here. And uh, we're going to have to fold the sheet. So we're gonna fold it along this line here. All right, you're gonna fold along that line. Try to get as close as you can so that we have a bend there. And then we're gonna fold it the opposite direction like that. So you should have a fold line across your page. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our page around like this. So see how I turned it? Turn it around like this. So the sky is still on the top. This is important. Sky is still on the top. So I'm just going to stick that there. And I'm actually going to tape mine on here because I know that it's going to probably fall off. I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to pour my black paint now. So if you guys got our packages, you should have a little bag of black paint. So you can just take your scissors and just cut the corner off of your black paint and pour it into your palette. Should have more than enough paint to get this project done. And this first one's really easy. All we need to do is paint this all black, the top part black. So we're painting above this fold black. So, and we're making sure that we are painting across our page and not up and down. So across, not up and down. So grab some more paint, just 
just going to keep on going here. And you shouldn't need a lot of paint to do this. And the more paint that you kind of gob onto your painting, uh, the longer it's going to take to dry and then it's going to wrinkle more and it's going to be more difficult to uh, put it together at the end. So try to uh, not put a lot of paint, but you want to make sure you have enough paint because we don't want to do, and this is very important, this. Now, if you guys can see that, but it's like, kind of all blotchy here. This is dry brushing. So this is a technique that you can use on some paintings, but we want this to be nice and black, as black as the night sky. So we want to put black all the way across this painting here. And we don't need to paint the bottom part. We're only painting the top part. So just like that, we've got our first piece done and it's already almost dry, mine. It doesn't take very long for these to dry. So I want you guys to try to find a place in your house where you can place this um, that isn't going to get messy and that it can dry. So somewhere on the floor near you or on a table, um, you can put a garbage bag down so you can set this on top. So I'm just going to put mine on the ground here and I'm going to go to my next one here. So the next page we're going to have is our mountains far here. So this is the next one we're going to do mountains far. So we're going to fold along the dotted line. Fold along the dotted line again like this, and then we're gonna fold the opposite direction. So we have a fold line again, right there. And we're going to turn this page over like this. Turn it over like this. We wanna make sure that the mountains is still on top and then this the little part is on the bottom. And again, I'm gonna tape this on because I don't want it to fall off while I'm painting. You guys don't have to worry about this because you're probably painting on a table or something like that. So we're just gonna put some tape up here. All right. So now you're going to want to cut your blue and uh, your white paint and put them into your palette. So I'm gonna start that right now. So I'm gonna cut my white first. white in there and my blue and make sure that you guys uh you know put on a paint shirt I'm actually really bad I don't have a paint shirt I usually have my paint apron but I could not find it this morning but you should be wearing something to protect your clothes or wear old clothes uh, you don't want to wreck your nice clothes doing this. So this one's lots of fun because we can be really messy painting this part. So we're only going to be painting above this folded line here. So we're painting everything above. So what we're going to do is we are going to stick our paintbrush. Let's see if I can get this in here. We're going to stick the paintbrush into black and then we're going to stick it into the blue. And then we're going to do a bunch of crazy lines on the top. So we're just going to kind of go woo, all over the place. And we're going to do the same thing again. This time I'm going to do blue and then a bit of black. I'm going to go all over the place here. Crazy. And now while this paint is still white or dry, or sorry, while it's still wet, I'm going to add some white in there and I'm going to do some more crazy lines. And I'm going to keep doing this all the way across my page. So I'm doing some black and blue again. Bit of white in there. Put a bit more white in there. Some more blue. 
and a little bit more black. So when you're doing these brush strokes, you want to make sure that you are doing lines that are kind of zigzaggy up and down rather than side to side. These are going to be our mountains and mountains usually form a peak, right? So like this, they're not like this. So you want your squiggly lines to look more like this as much as you can. I know they're squiggly lines, so, you know, there's probably going to be some places that isn't quite perfect, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And try to get as many of the big gobs of paint off as you can. And there you go. That's all you need to paint. You see, I didn't paint all the way around the outside edge here. Uh, so you don't either. Uh, just try to get as close as you can and then don't paint past this line. You don't need to. Don't need to do that. So we're just gonna place this on the ground now. And we're gonna grab our next sheet. So our next one, see if you guys can guess what our next sheet is going to be. It's Mountains Near. Mountains Near is our next one. So we are, I'm sure you guys have probably figured out what we're going to do. We're going to fold along this line again. Fold right here. Fold on that line. Just like this. And then fold the other way. So, and this is important again, we want to make sure that the mountains stay on the bottom. So I'm going to flip this over. So I've got a little section on top and a big section on the bottom. And I am going to tape this onto this board here. And we are going to start painting. So, and sorry if I cut out at all guys. So what we're going to do now is exactly the same thing, but we're going to add more white this time. So this time I'm gonna put my brush into the white and then I'm gonna put it into the black and then I'm gonna add a little bit of blue in there. And it's okay if this gets messy. This is the fun thing about this painting is that kind of the more messy it is, the better it turns out. And the thing you need to remember about this one is you want the paint, the painting on this one to be lighter than your mountains far. So I'm just going to pick up my mountains far, if I can grab it here. And I want to make sure that this one is lighter than this one. So I think that I still need to add some more white on this one to get it the right color. So I'm going to add some more white and blue into this one. Again, I'm just doing some crazy scribble lines. And go crazy with your scribble lines. Bit more white over there. And it's okay if you have chunks of, or blo not blobs, but blotches of white on here. So let's say if I just left this kind of blotch right there, that's fine because this could be the snow on your mountains. Uh, so we don't want to overwork our paint so that it just turns into one solid color of gray. So if you look here, I'm just swirling the paint around here and now it's just gray and it doesn't look very fun. We want lots of different shades in there. So we want to make sure that we don't overwork our painting nice and quick. I think I still need a bit more white in there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, so we've got our mountains near done now. So just find a place for this on the floor, like you did your other one. And which one do you think we're going to do next? We don't have very many, we've only got two left. We are going to be doing our ground now. So again, 
you guys have probably guessed it, we're going to fold along the dotted line. Let's fold on the dotted line. Fold it this way. Do you guys know why we fold it the two ways? We fold it once this way so we can get the fold line. We fold it this way so that the piece of paper lies nice and flat when we're painting on it. So we're going to flip this around so the ground is on the bottom. Okay? We want the ground on the bottom. Now, you guys can wash your brushes off now, but you don't need to. If you've got a bunch of, as you can see, I've got, I've got like white gobs of paint and some blue on there. I don't want white at all. So I'm just gonna scrape that off of my brush. I really don't need to wash it off. There's really no need. So I'm just scraping that off. That's good enough. And now I am, Usually I just paint this bottom part black, but I'm going to make it a dark blue this time just for fun. So I'm going to put some blue on my brush and some black on my brush. There goes my easel. Let me set this up. Oh, let's lock this into place here. There we go. All right. So we're going to take our black and our blue and we're just going to paint the bottom part of this here. And we're going across the page this time, across the page. So black and blue, so we've got a nice dark blue. Mine's a very dark blue. And this one, unlike the mountains, you want it to be a solid color. You don't want to see a whole bunch of different colors in it. We don't want to see black. We don't want to see blue. We want to see a dark blue. Just about done here. And you don't need to paint this whole page. You only need to paint up to the fold. And make sure you've covered all, all the white spots in here. We don't want to see any of that white in there. All right, so we've got our ground done. So we've got most of our painting done. Pretty quick, right? Pretty easy. The next thing we are going to do, first find a spot to put this down. So I'm just gonna lay mine down over here. And we are going to grab our very last piece, which should be your bison. And we are going to be cutting out our bison now. Uh, and I want you guys to make sure that your hands are clean. So I still have some paint on my hands and I'm just gonna make sure that it's dry. Yeah, so it's not coming off of my fingers, so that's good. If you guys still have wet paint on your fingers, go wash them off because we don't want to get any paint on our bison. This is our frame. We want it to be nice and white and beautiful. So we need to grab our scissors here. And I want you guys to listen before you start cutting because this is the most difficult instruction in this whole project here. So you guys, I want you to pinch your bison, kind of right where his heart would be, pinch it there. And we're just gonna make a little cut with our scissors. So now we have a hole in here and we are going to cut only on the black line, only on the black line. We're not going to cut out. We are imagining that our scissors are a train and this black line here are the tracks and the train cannot leave the train tracks. So I want you guys to cut out this bison thinking about that. Make sure you don't cut out this way. We are staying on our tracks. So you guys can uh, start cutting out now and I wish you luck. Take your time. This bison has lots of little tiny areas. So just do your best. 
doesn't have to be totally perfect. And if you are doing this at home and you didn't have our printables, you could draw out your own bison or you could do a different animal like a wolf. A wolf would be kind of cool or like a eagle maybe. That might be fun. Or you could just do something simple like an oval or a triangle. So I'm just very carefully going around all of the edges here. And hello to everybody that I didn't say hello to earlier. I know I saw Malaya and Ariana in the chat. Great, and if you guys see here, I already got paint on my bison, which isn't very good considering I'm teaching the class and told you guys not to get paint on your bison. Luckily, it's white. So if people were bison, what part of a person would the hooves be? Do you guys know? They've got two hooves on a bison on their feet. It would be your fingers like this. If I can do it like that, your fingers there. So they're actually walking on their fingertips when they're walking on their hooves, which is kind of cool. And we have a bison bone at the museum and I wish I had grabbed it, but you guys, once you know, social isolation is over, you can come to the museum and check it out, but it is over 4,000 years old, this bone, from a bison that once walked around Hinton. So this part here, it's kind of tricky to cut out. So you don't have to do all of the little bumps. I'm just gonna kind of do the best I can. And if you guys remember the trick I taught you last week, I'm moving the paper and not my scissors. Whoops. Makes it a little easier to cut. And voila, I have a bison. He wants to stay there. So this is what it should look like when you're all done cutting. So I know some people have kept these bisons and done another project with it. So you guys can do that too. Buster the bison, yes, would be a good thing. So here's our frame. So we have almost all of the parts we need. So I want you guys to set your bison in a place that isn't gonna have paint on it. So away from your painted pieces, find a home for this. We don't wanna get paint on this. I'm going to stick mine over there and I'm going to grab my sky. Where did my sky go? It's down here. So here is my sky. Perfect. And I am going to just stick this right up here. I'm going to put some tape on that so it doesn't go anywhere. Ooh, this masking tape, it is not very good. All right, let's just stick that sucker up there, just like that. And now we are going to grab our, what was the next one we painted? Do you guys remember? It was our mountains far. So we're gonna turn our page over so that we can see where it says mountains far on here. And we're gonna take our scissors and we are going to cut out along the solid line, not on the dotted line, the solid line. So we're gonna cut out our mountains far. And if it's still wet, uh, don't cut it yet. I find that it can rip really easy when the paper is still wet, but if you didn't put a lot of paint on it, it should be dry. Awesome. So here's our first two layers up on our painting. And now that we can see where the sky is, I am going to add a couple of stars into my lovely night sky. And you guys know a lot of or you know a lot about constellations now. So you could put a constellation that you learned about, like Pinocchio, Cassiopeia, 
Uh, you can learn about uh, or put Ursa Minor up here, Ursa Major, any of those lovely constellations that you learned about. And I am actually going to be taking the back of my paintbrush. I can grab it here. So the back of my paintbrush, and I am going to be dipping it into my white paint here. So if you don't have a really tiny brush, this is a great way to do this. So I'm just going to dip it in there, and I am going to add very, very, very tiny little dots to do some constellations in the night sky here. I don't want to do big gobs of paint. I want just little tiny ones. So I just did Cassiopeia, and now I'm just going to do some random constellations here. Just like that. Some nice, ooh, that was too big. Some little stars all across the sky here. And you can add as many or as few stars that you as you want. You could also do glue and then put glitter on here. Whew. That would be pretty cool. Or if you have any glow in the dark tape left over from the glow in the dark cubes, you could cut out little bits of that and put on here and then it would glow in the dark or use glow in the dark paint. That would also be pretty neat as well. So I've got all my stars done there. And I am now going to grab my oops, mountains near and I am going to cut these guys out now. So again, we're going to cut on the solid line, not on the dotted line, the solid line. And if I'm going too fast, you guys can always come back after and rewatch this video. So there's our next layer of mountains. I'm really liking it. You can see that this one in the back, the mountains far is darker than this one in the front. So we can see a uh, distance in between these two mountains. And I'm gonna grab my ground now and flip it over. It says ground there and I'm gonna cut on the solid line, not the dotted line. And make sure you don't cut these little triangles out. And does anybody know what these little triangles are on this piece of paper? Any guesses? These are teepees. Teepees that the indigenous people used. Could also be from outfitters in the area too. So we're just gonna put that up there. Looking pretty good. So we've got our teepees on here, but I want the doors of my teepees open, the flaps of the teepees open. So I want some light coming out of them. So again, I'm gonna go back to my palette and I'm going to add a bit of white onto the end of my brush. And I am going to put in a little kind of triangle shaped dot in each of these little teepees here to show that they are open. There, just like that. So we're actually all done our painting now. Uh, we just need to assemble this picture. So I'm going to take these two pieces, the ground and the uh, mountains near and just put them aside. And we're going to take the mountains far and I'm going to put, I'm using double-sided tape, but you guys can use your glue sticks and you want to make sure that you glue this really good. So you want to have glue all the way around. Do it really good. On mine, on my last copy of this that I did earlier, I actually didn't put glue at the top and I don't know if you can see this but these kind of stick out here and it adds a really cool 3D effect to it. So you can do uh, this as well. So don't glue all the way up to the top and then you can get that kind of curled effect on there. 
So I am going to start gluing slash double sided taping my sheet onto the back or the sky here so we can start finishing our wonderful painting that we have just created. So one more sheet here. I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing right now. But yeah, I just got my tape on and I'm just gonna stick this right on here. And I'm gonna take this off because this is something else you guys need to remember too. Make sure that you do. I'm gonna make sure that I line up the corner of my mountain spark with the corner of my sky and the bottom all lines up. That way, it's the right size. And when we put our frame on, everything fits just nice. Great, so I've got that stuck together. Do you guys remember what the next one was? It was mountains near. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add some glue or double-sided tape onto the back of this picture as well. So make sure you put lots of glue on here. You want it to stick, put lots of pressure on the picture too when you are sticking it together and hold it for a bit. This paper, it likes to curl when it has been painted on. So it's fighting against that glue, but you can win as long as you hold it down there. So again, I'm going to take my picture here and I am going to add this onto the bottom here. On there, lining up all the edges. So we've got our next layer. Now we've got our teepees here. Now make sure that your little windows or doors are dry before you start gluing because you don't want glue every which way or double-sided tape like I'm doing. Put it all the way around here. Make sure you've got a nice I'm going to stick that on there. Again, lining up the edges. Great. So we've got our layers all done. And our very last piece is our bison. So you can just leave the painting like this. It is quite pretty just by itself. And I kind of like it that the edges are kind of left kind of rough. It is cool that way too. But I'm putting the frame on because I love the frame. So I'm going to flip this around so that I can't see the black outlines. We want to give the illusion that we are perfect at this. So we are going to flip it around and we are just going to attach this on here. Just attach it on and I am gonna just use this tape right now. And has anybody seen a bison in the wild? I know that they have them at Elk Island National Park, just outside of Edmonton. And they are pretty cool. They've got two different types of bison at Elk Island. They've got woods and they've got the plains bison there. So I'm just gonna put tape around the edges. Now you guys can do a nice job gluing. I'm just sticking it together here. And last part. Tape this side and make sure your edges are all nicely lined up. Great. There is your finished painting. It's all done. And I'm sure that your guys' looks way better than mine because you won't have tape around the outside edges. It'll be nice and glued together. And you could put in your own little artist signature down in the corner here because you guys have created a beautiful painting here. 
Now, for everybody who joined in Tara's uh, mystery suitcase earlier this week, she is going to be revealing the answers to what those mysterious items were on Tuesday. Um, and she's going to be teaching how to make superhero capes and masks that session. So it's going to be a really fun one. And on Wednesday, we are going to learn how to become a superhero. We're going to be building a little game with shooters and a 3D building and uh, coming up with our own kind of a superhero comic book picture. And then we're going to make um, puppet superheroes, which are very neat. Uh, so we look forward to having you guys then. Please spread the word about Quarantine. Train. Uh, if you are watching for free, uh, please consider making a small donation on our website. And thank you everybody else who have supported the museum. We really, really appreciate it. And I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your week.